the best piece of advice I have for someone trying to succeed in the film industry or any creative space is if you're doing what everyone else is doing, you're doing it wrong. What's up guys, it's Jason over here at Cockyer Farm. We are going to be in the garden again today. We fixing to plant this sucker. I'm probably through with my kale for the year. Probably going to pull that up. But the main thing is, is I'm going to get some seeds in the ground. And then when I get through the raised bed garden, we're going to migrate over to the big garden, pull the black tarp up and plant some daggum pink eye purple hull peas and some zipper cream, cream, queen cream peas over there and yeah let's get started what I'm gonna do today is is I'm gonna try to plant some cosmic purple carrots i'm gonna plant some borage and this is a uh, this is a flower and herb i got several flowers i'm gonna plant of course i got marigold monticello old poppies this is an old poppy seed that uh looks like it come from thomas jefferson's place so i'm gonna plant some of these i'm gonna make one of these beds strictly just flowers kind of do it in rows and that way i can keep the weeds out then uh, we're going to plant some of these right here. I got this from Rose 7. It's that nude seed company I talked about in my podcast a couple of weeks ago. This is from Chef Dan Barber where they're creating some new heirloom variety seed. It's called 782. And what Dan and his crew are doing over there is, is they're strictly developing old heirloom varieties for flavor. Uh, so this is, this is exciting right here. I got some of that. Also today in a raised bed garden, we're going to plant some Blue Lake snap beans. This will be the first year that I've planted these, so I'm super excited about this. I usually plant a pole bean that's, uh, that's a, you know, a climber. I'm not going to have room for that this year, so I'm going to do a bush. So I'm going to plant this. I may plant this in a couple of beds. When I get through with this, we're going to run over there just right across my driveway to my big garden that I call it this night raised bed and hopefully I can get that sucker prepped and ready to plant some pink eye purple holes some zipper creams and this is a, you know your southern cow peas and so we're gonna plant these with our pink eye purple holes I got the pink eye purple bulls in the freezer because I save those seeds every year because they're super easy to save and I'm sure these will be the same way so if y'all want to chill with me while we're in the garden, while it's a beautiful, gorgeous day here, let's go. We really love snap beans here, so I would really like to have a whole bunch of them. So I know I'm going to plant at least at least two beds worth. And it looks like the Blue Lake is, is one that it's not going to reproduce. It's going to come up, you get a harvest, and then you get rid of it. <clears throat> and so what they suggest is is every three weeks plant a new batch so that's probably what I'll do I plant several in here and then in three weeks come back and plant some more they're fairly large seeds so you know you probably want them quarter inch deep something like that oh yeah by the way several people have asked me about the snakes in the garden did I see the snake in the garden uh, yeah, I, I did see the snake in the garden. I put these in here to war the birds off to try to keep those suckers out of here. And so you'll see these throughout my garden. Uh, just cheapo rubber snakes I bought from, I don't even know where I got them from. I've had them forever. That's what, that's what they're in here for. Um, does it work? You know, I don't know. I don't have a bird issue, so maybe it does work. The key to them though is, is you got to move them around you can't keep them in the same spot you know birds have bird brains but they ain't that stupid when these come up on this side I'll come back and put cardboard in between them to try to keep the weeds down and then when the seeds get a little bit taller I'm gonna come back with some just some leaf mulch or whatever I can find around here and mulch them real good. 
but I want them to come up because I don't want the mulch to stunt them like you know like a like you would su suppress the weed so that's what I'm gonna do over here and then I'll show you all that later when all that comes up and too I wouldn't worry about putting any type of fertilizer or anything down right now because all you're doing is wanting your seeds to germinate now once they get up maybe when you get that first real leaf because you're gonna get the two little immature leaves I wouldn't fertilize or anything like that until they come up and you may get that first mature leaf and that's just what I do they don't need anything right now because all of their food and everything they need is in that little seed now once they outgrow that then you could come back with some organic fertilizer or whatever you like to use I'm just gonna poke me a little hole I'm real scientific I'm super exact I'm a perfectionist as y'all can see Yeah, that's about a foot boom done got those planted next on the list in here is I got the borage and some flowers I need to figure out which bed I want to do those in I'm kind of thinking this one over here because it's got the headboard on it which it just looks super cool when you got flowers coming out of it which is right here this is a raised bed it's got the headboard I find these old headboards at thrift shops and flea markets and stuff and I got two more around here. I just think they just look cool. It gives a whimsical touch to my garden. I think I'm going to plant the barrage and flowers in this bed so it'll look pretty cool with the headboard. You know, I like to mix up flowers with my um, vegetables. Um, a lot of companion planting. Uh, the board is going to attract uh, bees and that kind of thing. I'm sure the poppies will too, which then in turn will help, you know, pollinate everything else in here and get some beneficial insects in here so I really love to do companion planting and it just to me just gives it just that extra touch that's just whimsical and different and um, I've always planted marigolds and most of y'all may know if you don't marigolds are really good companion planting because um, the smell they get off there's a lot of ant like rabbits allegedly don't like the smell of marigolds because of that smell they put off um, uh, caterpillars are supposed to not like marigolds so a lot of people like to plant marigolds with uh, with tomatoes of course and they're just in the garden in general so that's what we'll do as well I'll plant marigolds I got seeds I'll probably plant some seeds and then I'll probably buy a flat of marigolds now borage is a herb it's um I've never had it before but it's supposed to be a herb that's really really good and every part of the plant is edible including the flowers so I just think it'd be super cool and neat to have salads this summer with uh, the blue flowers in it from the borage. The Monticello poppy seeds, uh, I've never grown these before. So they come from southern seed exposures. A lot of poppies don't do well in our area because of the humidity. So I'm hoping these are acclimated to our climate. If not, oh well. Now the borage is a uh, is a good bit smaller seed than that um than the beans were, so this won't be this won't be that deep. Just gonna put me just a little trench here with my hand, just ever so deep, and then come back and just drop these suckers in and just lightly cover it up. These poppy seeds are teen tiny. It sounds like salt. So that kind of gives you an idea. I know if I open them up, they're gonna go everywhere. So these are gonna be small. These, I'm not even gonna bury at all. I'm gonna just put these on the surface of the ground and maybe lightly cover it up. And that way, I know these won't be too deep. They're so small that it is a package in a package. And you can see, can you see the light shining through it? Look at that. That's a bunch of seeds right there. done poppies planted boards planted before I go on planting the next thing I've had several people ask me about these poles that I had set up in my raised bed garden and what I have them for is in case I need to trellis something um, I can run you can see I got twine on this one I can run just twine from this one to that one and um, it offers some support if I have something that's growing too big like if I had a tomato that was falling over that got past the cage um, if I had a pepper plant or if I had a row of something, I could use this twine and help support it. That's what these are here for. I had several people ask me about, um, 
about doing a playlist of the music that I have in my videos and the music I like and I did just that it is on Spotify and it's completely free um, I'll put a link down below to the Spotify channel with the uh, cock hill dance informer playlist or you can just go to Spotify if you got Spotify already and just search the dance informer and the playlist come up and that way you know you can jam along with me now this is something, this is a tip, this is something that I like to do. I got this trellis here, right here. And these things are old. I bet this thing's 10 years old. I use this all the time. And all it is is one by fours with dog kennel, your old dog kennel type fencing on it. And you know, I, I take these things down, I store them. And basically, you can make a trellis anywhere. Um, I think this one's 8 by 6 you can make it 8 by 8 you can make it as big as you want it, honestly. Last year I used these things for uh, climbing squash, which I didn't plant this year. Um, I've used it for blackberries, um, I used it for cucumbers last year, and I'm going to use it for cucumbers again this year. These are the cucumbers I'm planting, it's, uh, they're called 782's, this comes from row 7, like I said earlier. This is an experimental cucumber that Dan Barber and his crew are trying to, um, trying to come up with. And um, 98% germination rate, which is totally awesome. Just gonna rake this mulch back. Let's see how big these are. They're not, cucumber seeds aren't very big. And typically cucumber seeds are so easy to do by seed. So you can save yourself money with um, putting cucumbers in and, and direct sow them into the ground and not worry about trays and not worry about trying to buy them already plant. But just your typical everyday cucumber seeds you can see here. Uh, they won't need to be that deep. They're fairly small. Probably make about a quarter inch deep hole. What is freedom? Uh, I think I stole this from Bob Dylan, but maybe I stole this from Woody Guthrie. Freedom for me is waking up in the morning and going to sleep at night and in between doing exactly what I want to do. Alright, got the cukes in the ground. So... So I'm, really, I'm really excited about those cucumbers. I always put links to everything I talk about in the description, so so I don't have to keep repeating that all the time. But um, super stoked about these cucumbers. Really, really stoked to what Dan and them are doing over there, Dan Barber, and uh, at row seven. So check them out. Next, I'm gonna put in some cosmic purple. This is probably my daughter's favorite vegetable. She loves cosmic purple carrots. I've grown other varieties, and she likes them, but she loves cosmic purple. Um, I do well with Cosmic Purple. My only issue with carrots are voles. V-O-L-E-S. And what a vole is, it looks like a mouse. And they come in and they eat these suckers from the bottom up. A lot of people think they have gophers. They don't have gophers most of the time. They probably got a vole. V-O-L-E-S. This is all they ever eat of my stuff. Carrots. They never eat anything else. All they touch are my carrots. Every year when I plant them, they eat about 80% of them and we can only harvest about 20%. So I may combat that with, with a mouse trap or something like that to see if I can um can can offset that situation. And with carrots, carrots are a teeny tiny seed similar to that poppy seed that we planted earlier. And I'm just gonna sprinkle these on top of the ground and just kind of pat them and slightly cover them up and they should come up. Carrots, for the most part, are easy to grow, except for voles is what I have. And if you don't have that that um pest, then you may, you may have no issues growing carrots. What's the secret to happiness? The secret to happiness is finding something you love and then doing that for the rest of your life. And got a good many seeds to lay up this little old packet. I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of seeds in here. Now, got this garden planted. Um, I don't think I got any more seeds to sow in here right now. I'm going to go over to the big garden and get it prepped uh, and get those cow peas in there. I did find me a, um, a cedar, a push cedar at the flea market. Unbelievable deal. I don't think anybody kind of knew what it was. So I'm going to use it this year to plant my cow peas in instead of me doing it by hand. I mean, my garden is roughly 45 by 45 give or take so planting it by hand is not hard but guy it does take a long time i'm on my hands and knees and i'm planting so this would be way way better i hope Go! Oh. 
so now we got this area we got all the plastic up and just as I thought this ground is super 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 soft and so there's really no need for me to do much to it what I'm gonna come through is I'm gonna get my um, wheelie plow and come through and maybe make me some furrows or some mounds with it so I can plant my peas in it but all in all really not much I really knew to do to this which is awesome two thumbs up on the tarp so far now let's go plant So, got this sucker plowed with my hand wheelie plow. See, you don't need expensive, ex you know, expensive equipment. But it did an awesome job. And you can pick those things up for 100 bucks. Probably less than that. I can't remember what I paid for it. All right, right off the bat, the earthway cedar wasn't working right but i had the wrong adapter in there or the wrong plate and it was just throwing out too many seeds that first row is probably going to be a mess um, i put a smaller the smaller piece uh p plate on there p plate <laughs> oh that's silly i put it on there and it's working and what i found was is, is i was trying to watch it and make sure that the seeds were dropping out and kind of not paying attention about my rows and so I would get off so after I realized this thing spitting seeds out to watch the rows and keep it straight so that's what I've been doing now and so now it's working I know I got a bunch of rows that are gonna be off but but this ain't no beauty pageant Can you reach one? Got it? that's today Wow. Got the peas planted. Fixing to throw some okra in the ground. Uh, my buddy wants to help me do that. We're going to plant it by hand and uh, not use the cedar. So let's get the throwing that okra in the ground. And the okra and peas, you just want to get them probably, you know, a half inch deep. Somewhere in there. It's a big seed. So, I mean, it can, it can stand to go deeper. Well, I finally got most of it planted. You know, we got a few things we need to plant here and there. Got to plant some, you know, our stuff in our backyard. And I need to go to the nursery and get some plants. But, yeah, it was an awesome day. Awesome day. It's nothing like being outside. And, and the weather's so awesome and nice. It's not hot yet. And getting dirty and being, you know, just in my little buddy helping me. is just an awesome day. So... But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like. For y'all, all y'all out there that is still snowing and cold, fingers crossed that spring's coming to y'all shortly, soon. But yeah, I hope y'all liked the video. And as always, y'all have a wonderful day. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Y'all be good.